Hello, dear colleagues. I'm very happy to have opportunity to talk with you about one of my favorite topics dedicated to the to the safe and predictable uh, retrieval of broken files. So I want to give you the lecture. It is called Save, not Save, but Safe and Predictable Methods of Broken Instruments Removal from Root Canal System. My name is Olga Zemlikova. I'm dentist and a dentist from Russia, Vladivostok. In 2008, I graduated from our of Vladivostok State Medical University. I have two certificates, a specialization in endodontics and in oral surgery. I'm mostly doing complex retreatment, apical surgery in a clinic where I work. Also, I'm the author of the educational course dedicated to the treatment of the odontogenous sinusitis and apical periodontitis. Also, I created a lecture a demonstration, even practical course dedicated to the safe and predictable retrieval of the file fragments from root canal system. Here in these pictures you see how educational activity uh, takes part in our clinic where I work, uh, lectures and teeth saving methods. Also I post my results about the retreatment and about file removal in different social networks, in Instagram and Facebook. You can follow uh, my work. Also today I wanted to talk with you about a broken instrument inside the root canal system. Uh, do all these broken files are the reason of the apical periodontitis? According to some researchers, only in 5% cases the broken file could be the reason of the failure of the endodontic treatment. We have to understand that instrument itself will not cause the inflammation. The reason of the apical in, in, in periodontitis infection in the root canal system. We have to discuss this thing. Where is the infection in case of the apical periodontitis? First of all, the zone of the maximum necrosis and maximum infection is the orifice and uh, cor coronal part of the canal. The middle part of the canal is zone of the potential infection. An apical part, part is a zone of inflammation with minimal probability of infection. We have to understand it. Depending on which level of the root canal system the instrument is broken, you can make the right decision about the necessity of the retrieval of the instrument or you can uh, uh, decide not to do this complex manipulation. Let me show one of the clinical cases in my practice. The instrument itself, the broken instrument, could be uh, the interference uh, for the, uh, the cleaning and shaping and obturation of the root canal system in the uh, in the space between the broken file and the dentin wall, it could be microorganisms. Uh, the, if the instrument is broken in the middle part of the root canal, we cannot exclude the infection inside the apical part of the root canal. So there is a, if there are bacteria, they would sustain the apical periodontitis, the inflammation. You see CBCT, the patient was treated in another clinic during that treatment. There was a complication, the file was broken inside the root canal system. And just after this complication immediately the doctor performed CBCT where you see the hypertrophy of the Schneiderian membrane in the sinus. I think that's the uh, reaction to over instrumentation or maybe some temporary filling of the canal with calcium hydroxide. It was one year before. One year after the patient came to me and I've seen different picture on CBCT. We see the uh, picture of the apical periodontitis and I have had to decide what to do in this clinical case. As I think I can remove instruments from root canal system, that's what I propose to do here to this patient. So the patient was informed that uh, the instrument itself is not a reason of inflammation but its presence, presence inside the root canal system would be the interference for the cleaning and shaping and obturation, remove the instrument. Also, I made the root canal obturation with MTA and you see the result six months after after the treatment I performed that was uh, about the retrieval of the instrument, mechanical shaping, irrigation and obturation. Here in this clinical case, really the instrument was the reason of the apical periodontitis and its removal helped us to have the positive dynamics of this treatment of this case. Unfortunately, everybody breaks instrument. I think that even experienced doctors would agree with me that this kind of complication that sometimes could happen in our practice 
and sometimes we think why it happens as i think uh, my opinion the most important reason is the wrong angulation of the insertion of the rotary instrument inside the canal when we ignore the anatomy on the also no, not adequate access when i'm preparing for the practical courses i prepare for the doctors teeth blocks uh, where we break the instruments for the uh, students to uh, try to uh, remove the instruments. It's not very easy to uh, break a lot of instruments inside the root canal system. I tried to do that with uh, high speed and it was not easy. So then I started to insert the instrument with the wrong angulation and rotary files started to break immediately. So for me, the main reason why the instruments are broken is the wrong angulation of insertion. Then in the second place, I think it is... Uh, increased pressure on the instrument during the rotation when doctor tries tries to push on the instrument and so it creates a lot of pressure on the instrument and the instrument could be bro broken inside the root canal system also when doctor decided not to use irrigation solutions one of the reasons also prolonged protracted period of usage of the instrument some authors also uh, tell about the reason of the high uh, uh, rotation high speed of rotation of the instruments but i'm not agree i don't agree with it a lot of experienced doctors work with 600 rpm with it without any difficulties after if you want to talk about the causes of the file breakage uh inside the root canal system we have to discuss uh torsion torsional stress and cyclic fatigue torsional stress happens when the rotation is rotating inside the root canal system and cuts denting during the rotation of the instrument the denting is uh performing the resistance to the cutting energy of the instrument. If the, uh, the resistance of the canal walls are higher than the resistance of the instrument, then the instrument would be broken inside root can system. Cyclic fatigue is when the rotating instrument is rotating inside the curved canal. We have to understand in, in the curvature area, there is a compression of the instrument and on the other side there is stretching when instrument rotates 180 degrees these zones are take uh, uh, are changing places and these cycles of stretch and compress uh, is a cyclic fatigue will will create the breakage of the rotating nickel titanium instrument what i want to talk about I, I value what uh, our manufacturers are doing for us there is big variety of choice for root canal shaping and treatment but not there is no ideal system and there is no system that could offer to us some some uh, really uh, uh, great difference or in the cleaning of the root canal system so the efficiency is more or less the same so all the files could be broken i checked it in my practice there is no system that i could manage to break inside the root canal system of my patients so there is a scheme of uh, uh, making the clinical decision if this complication happened. So of course, we can think for a long time about the breakage of the files when it's not happening in our practice. But if it happened with us during our work, we have to understand how we can uh, try to take the decision in this clinical situation. So we have to understand if the tooth is vital or infected we have to understand that the re reason of the apical periodontitis is infection that is inside the root canal system system we fight with infection not with a metal file that is blocked inside the root canal so if the tooth is vital uh, there is nothing dangerous if the instrument would be inside the root canal system if the tooth is infected then we have to do everything in our power to bypass the instrument or to remove it the next criteria is it the initial or final step of the root canal shaping and cleaning if it happened during the initial stage when it didn't have time to uh, remove the uh, remnants of the tissues inside the root canal then the uh, the uh, the probability of the apical periodontitis would be very high if you did it, did it on the final stages so when you clean the canal so you can re relieve the root canal the file in the root canal the file so it would give any complication and the third is whether the instrument is broken before or after the curvature i can tell you frankly that there is no method today that can help us effectively and safely remove the broken files of epically from the curvature the only thing that we can try to do is try to bypass the 
a file. So if you ask me about all the methods that I utilize, all the techniques, I can tell you that bypass method is, uh, I think, the, is the best because it uh, is less invasive for the denting. And this method can help you to save denting and not to cut it. So there is no to uh, contemporary methods that can help you to remove the f uh, files uh, epically from the curvature. Sometimes we just could be luckier, and I will show you some of the cases. The procedure of the broken file removal from the root canal system very often uh, uh, requires straight line access. We'll talk about this system. Because of the creation of the straight line access, there are certain risks. First of all, is the loss of the sound dentine of the root, weakening of the canal walls. Also, there is risk of additional breakage of the instruments, creation of ledges, perforations, transpor transportations, apical zipping, and even the pushing of the instrument inside the periodontal tissues. Let me show you how it could look like. First of all, look at this clinical case. This is not my work. This uh, patients came to the clinic after they tried another clinic to, to seek some help and I was collecting these cases of the attempts to remove the files. Look, the over expansion of the canals, the, the, the deficiency of the dentin and you can talk about, talk about the good prognosis after removing the files. Yeah, the doctor succeeded in removal the files, the broken files, but these teeth would be extracted in the nearest future because there are uh, weakened there, there is overexpansion of the root canal, so they are very, very weak. Look at this clinical case. The patient came to the clinic several times. My colleague tried to remove the instrument, and the problem was that she she didn't visualize the file. She was blindly working with uh, ultrasonic tip. The uh, the mistake I've I've seen often that. Doctors do not wash out the debris from the root canal system. It's very important to wash out the debris and to understand the position of the instrument inside the root canal. After that, you can precisely work with ultrasonic tip on the broken file. So I removed the file quite easily using ultrasonic tips. So I uh, uh, sent patient back for the finalization of the treatment to the doctor has started the treatment, but you see the overexpansion of the root canal, how many sound dentin was lost. Also, there is opinion that many doctors who perform the retrieval of the broken files do not show obturation because sometimes obturation is not beautiful. So right now, knowing these uh, remarks, I'm trying to show the obturation after removal of the instruments. I think it's very important just to demonstrate how precisely uh, I could be in some in certain clinical case. In another uh, case from my clinical practice, this situation was about six years ago when I just started to uh, work on the uh, problems of the retrieval of the broken instruments. The patient came to the clinic with this problem. My colleague, very good friend of mine, uh, broke several instruments inside the canal and then I didn't have the knowledge, experience and instruments and skills uh, so uh, I had a task to remove the instruments with uh, anything that is possible to do that. I did it and I was proud of that work that, then. I thought that everything was great. I'm a good doctor. But look how I was uh, ruthless to the dentin. Right now I understand that maybe uh, uh, I wouldn't uh, uh, try to remove these instruments. Yes. That's what we have to think about sometimes. Another complication of pushing of the instrument uh, to the periodontal tissues, these kind of complications would happen in your practice. So you have to uh, just make peace with it. When I'm starting to work with files that could be an apical portion and I can uh, think that during the attempt of removal of the instrument, there can be a complication of the extrusion of the file to the periodontal tissue, tissues. I uh, inform the patient and I tell him in, the, in this case, if the complication arises, we can do surgical correction. Let's talk about this clinical case. I decided not to remove the instrument. I'll explain you why. First of all, there are certain risks of the extrusion of the instrument into the sinus. Also, we see a lot of mistakes, technical mistakes in the root canal treatment. We see transportation of the apex. We see broken file. We see that mesial buccal root is uh, almost in the sinus. We see the extrusion of the gutta percha into the sinus. 
and analyzing this clinical case, I analyze that these attempts uh, that I would use here trying to, uh, to correct this situation, they are not equivalent. So there is risk of pushing the file into the sinus, and then we'll have to ask the ENT specialist for the help. So analyzing this clinical situation and understanding that I wouldn't be able to do the apical surgery for this tooth, so I declined to do the work for this clinical case. Another thing, additional file breakage inside the root canal, sometimes from root canals. I remove not one or two, but for sometimes three, five, seven files. I can tell you sincerely, I'm not charging for each instrument. I'm charging only for the most complicated file, but it could be a very nice business. So I'm showing you obturation. The picture's on the right. This is my clinical case. So I made the breakage of the protaper next. I removed it and my colleagues and social networks asked for showing the obturation x-ray. So I did it. So I managed not to destroy this tooth in attempt of removing. Also, I like the relation of the complexity of the clinical case that I group from very good doctor Sergio Nicola. What he's talking about? We have to analyze the clinical case and we have to understand what kind of method we would use. Bypass or we'll try to remove the file judging by several criteria. First of all, the size. If the size of the broken file is less than the curvature of the canal, then this instrument could be easily removed or we can try to do bypass. If the instrument is bigger than the radius of the curvature of the canal, then the retrieval would be problematic because for removal of the file from the root canal, we have to remove a lot of denting to straighten the file because the instrument is all uh, always in compressed position inside the canal. So it will be uh, the reason of the bad prognosis. Then the location in uh, coronal or middle part of the root canal to remove the instrument if you have the microscope and ultrasonic tips, uh, there is no any difficulties. In from apical third, sometimes it's more problematic, and here I think it's better to use bypass method. The third, visualization. If you see the instrument inside the root canal system, then you can remove it. If you don't visualize the instrument, so you couldn't bypass it, then so you're not talking about the attempt of removing if you'll try to create the straight line access to remove the instrument and then you'll have the complication immediately maybe like perforation or extreme over expansion of the root canal a peripical peripical lesion if there is a peripical lesion if it's present then you can try to remove the instruments if the tooth is not uh, uh, infected. So I think you don't have to try to remove the instruments from the healthy teeth that do not require any treatment. And the last criteria, also very important, the presence of the instruments, the availability of the instruments. I like what Sergio says, no dome, no heroes. If you don't have microscope, don't play hero. If you don't have ultrasonic tips, special instruments, you don't have to do these complicated manipulations. Sometimes I see colleagues share with me x-rays when they try to remove the instruments without any additional ultrasonic tips, a microscope. And I'm surprised really, how could they do that? But at the same time, I see the x-rays when the teeth are overexpanded and weakened. So, in case of unsuccessful attempts of bypass, uh, the, uh, the instrument, and in, in, if one hour or sometimes experienced doctor could spend two, three hours for achieving goal, but mostly we talk about one hour of working time. If you failed in bypass method and you couldn't retrieve the broken file, from the root canal system, or if the file is broken beyond the curvature, what is recommended to do? First of all, you have to mechanically treat the root canal to make the irrigation ultrasound activation on the uh, length till the broken file, then intracanal uh, capturation with calcium, calcium cardioxide for two, four weeks, and then final obturation. If you provided these manipulations in six, 12 months, we performed the CBCT. And if we visualize that the peripical lesion is increasing, then unfortunately, we'll talk about the extraction of the tooth or about apical surgery. But sometimes it's enough just to treat the root canal until the broken file. Uh, maybe the maximum infection would be in the middle 
L kernel part of the root canal, but in the area where there is instrument there will be no microorganisms, so maybe it will give the a good prognosis after the treatment. This case from my practice, I was the fourth or fifth doctor, my colleagues tried to remove this file without microscope, with microscope, then they sent the patient to my clinic, also couldn't remove this instrument, just take notice uh, about the uh, overexpansion of the epical part when I uh, work with big inst uh, size instrument, edge file, you see the, the instrument is uh, compressed on one side of the wall, the apex is over expanded, so I didn't succeed here, I use calcium hydroxide inside the root canal for temporary obturation, and I give the right to the patient and the doctor, the, uh, the choice that I don't know what kind of decision they made, but what are the options? We can do the obturation and follow up with CBCD in 6 and 12 months, or extraction of this tooth and replacement for the implant. The mechanistic approach to, to uh, try to remove the instruments with, with uh, any, in any case, uh, it's wrong because it could lead to complication and these teeth wouldn't be able to survive inside the uh, or or a cavity. Yeah, you're, you did great, you removed the instrument, but you destroyed the tooth. There are a lot of techniques today that uh, uh, utilize for the removal of the broken files. What technique to choose? This is only part of the methods that I managed to find in the literature, so let's talk about some of them. The Most of the techniques uh, talk about the creation of the straight line access. We can do modified gates bleeding burrs or some special long shank burrs Many years I tried to do the straight line access to the broken file with this, uh, with ultrasonic tips or with these burrs, and I realized that it's very complicated. You have to control it under the microscope, and it requires a lot of time. Right now, the straight line access to the broken file, which is in the middle of a apical portion, I create with the orifice file, uh, protaper A6 or pre-raise. There is no problem with that. Oh, then, uh, uh, in the existing method, this is RS method, I think you've heard about it, then uh, there is method uh, of Dr. Terauchi, Ter Dr. Terauchi kit is not certified, unfortunately, in Russia, or we couldn't buy it, then Zumax kit, also there is a Brady technique, when we braid files uh, on the broken file, but in my hands this technique is not working, and I think if we'll try to utilize this technique, I think I'll break three or five instruments inside the root canal system, but it's not bad for removal of the silver points. The uh, technique of, of the use of the glue, I'll show you the video. Also technique with the use of the magnet, I see the device, but it didn't find white wrench in practice, but in my practice I use this kind of magnet stand that can, uh, you see, uh, ma magnetize the endodontic probe, so it starts to attract stainless steel instruments, and stainless steel instrument I could try to remove with its magnetic stand. Also, we want to uh, mention that uh, among all the methods of extraction of the broken files, the preferred one is the use of the ultrasonic tips, it's the safest, the most control, controllable and effective method of removal of the broken files. The sound itself is a mechanical vibration that propagates as an acoustic wave through uh, air, metal or some liquids. Ultrasound is very, very precise thin instrument in our hands that could vibrate with a speed higher than 20,000 vibrations per second. Pay attention, this is very precise instrument that could help us to uh, deal with a lot of complex uh, tasks in endodontics. In, in the beginning I used two tips, ET40, a long uh, tip with 4% taper and U-file, but ET40 is very dense, maybe aggressive, and there is not enough uh, power for U-file. Then in our market Another tips appeared that uh, also uh, uh, they uh, I like them very much from titanium niobium alloy. What is the uh, their uh, advantages? That's a very good alloy. It's perfect by compatibility and it will be much lower vibration relative reduction 
uh, in, in, the, in canal. So you can bend it beforehand and insert it in the root canal. So this tip wouldn't cont can contact with root canal walls and you can more precisely. My favorite is ET25. ET25 is, this is short tip with a length 15 millimeters with 4% taper, ET25 20 millimeters length and taper 3%. With this tip I could remove instruments from the middle apical part of the root canal. It, uh, S tip I can use in working in the orifice part, in the coronal part or to remove a fiber post and ET25L. This is the tip made from titanium niobium alloy. You can bend it before at the length 25 millimeters, taper 3%. I could work in the curved canals, in the long canals where the instruments are in the apical portion of the root canal. And I could effectively try to remove them. But in 2019, uh, I've managed to see a very interesting article that was dedicated to the use of the ultrasound for the uh, in removal of the fractured instrument from the middle third of the root canal. They made research that took uh, several teeth and they managed to break the false in the middle uh, part of the root canal, central incisors. Then they analyzed the resistance, uh, the strength of these teeth. And uh, in their research, they made the conclusion that uh, on a strength of teeth with the ultrasound, ultrasonic wouldn't uh, 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 wouldn't do any damage. But the main thing was the overexpansion of the canals when a lot of dentin was removed. So if too much dentin was uh, de uh, destroyed, so the tooth would be weakened. If you work precisely with ultrasound teams, they can bend before. So the removal of the, the instruments wouldn't lead to any problems and weakening of the tooth. I'll also one very important in, uh, thing is that during the visualization, uh, the visualization with the microscope and working with the ultrasonic tip, I recommend to uh, try to work according to the uh, uh, internal uh, uh, wall, because a lot of perforation I see on the in, uh, internal wall, and colleagues see that the canal may be uh, covered with debris, and I work on the uh, area that are oriented to the orifice and they can do perforation on the external wall of the canal. Let's talk about the design of the instrument. Uh, the, uh, my, the ferris design for removal is lentular because its design uh, tells us that there is space between the dentin wall and the instrument so we can go into this space and try to bypass it. It's not hard. Please take notice. What I'm doing, I'm taking the orifice file and going inside the canal. I'm reaching the broken file. I'm not using bores or ultrasonic tips for creating a ultra straight line access. So it's not hard here. After with st manual stainless steel file, I could bypass the lentula. Another clinical case, uh, two broken file fragments, but understand the design of the lentula uh, uh, can help me to uh, uh, pass the file near the broken file so that I can remove two broken files. Always uh, orifice file, always uh, the attempt to bypass with stainless steel manual file, hand file. Then I can use hand stainless steel files or any system of the rotating nickel, nickel, nickel titanium files to create space. Then it will be irrigation, ultrasonic activation, and this instrument easily. Uh, uh, removed from the root canal system. There are no difficulties in removing of these files and all the doctors who attend my lectures or practical courses, I'm telling them that you can easily try to do these cases. You can believe that the root canal system is quite uh, wide and you can always bypass and remove the instrument. <clears throat> So a practical advice from my side, as soon as you manage to do the bypass, so you pass through the instrument, make the x-ray, just be sure that you went uh, beyond the instrument and don't try to work precisely to the constriction because look, in this clinical case I tried to work until the constriction on the working left, I expanded the root canals and I created the space where the lentil could be displaced further. So instrument displaced epically and then I needed more time to try to remove it. Another important thing is if you manage to remove the instrument, you always do the patency of the root canal. I'm working as a, ref uh, 
a reference practice in a city where they work when colleagues send me patients to remove the instrument i understand that besides the retrieval of the instrument i have to create pat patent root canal to make the x-ray with a file and this uh, kind of report uh, sent to the uh, referent uh, to the doctor. Sometimes uh, doctors trying to do like this, uh, they do ledges and uh, so we have to smooth the ledge and uh, use for the high flexidem uh, instruments with uh, uh, shape uh, memory so I can uh, insert the instrument uh, according to the uh, uh, right canal uh, uh, anatomy uh, and trying to smooth the ledge. Another clinical case uh, you, you see with orifice file it was quite easy i was surprised how easy i managed to do that with orifice file when i inserted it inside the root canal i understood that uh, orifice file is is blocked between the broken file and dentin wall so part of the bypass was uh, performed by orifice file when i took manual stainless steel instrument and did the bypass i expanded the root canal during the irrigation instrument just left the root canal system. This clinical case, doctor for many uh, hours tried to uh, rem uh, trying to remove the files. Doctor managed to do the bypass, so maybe it was better to stop here. You can obturate with the instrument, so because the instrument itself wouldn't create the inflammation. But nevertheless, they sent the patient to me with a request to remove the instrument. Another mistake, you know, by doctors. Sometimes they don't uh, have arch file of the big size. It was H, H file. You can insert. You can understand that H file went beyond and blocked, engaged, and you can pull it and pull with this instrument the broken file. About the pulling of, uh, of, of with H file uh, the instrument. Another clinical case from my practice. Two broken files. One in the middle. Uh, canal in distal canal and other is an epical part and the periodont, uh, periodontal tissues are removed to broken files so I don't think it's not uh, difficult to remove the instrument in a uh, middle portion of the root canal but in the distal canal you see the canal was obturated with gutta percha I removed the gutta percha so it's not will it not, will not fix the uh, broken file instrument inside the canal then I took H file of the big size and beyond the lentula, I went into the periodontal tissues. I understand it's not the best manipulation, but I understand that constriction before me was already uh, opened very much and was destroyed by the aggressive methods utilized by my colleagues. So I managed to insert the edge file and I uh, understood the moments when edge file was blocked, engaged by the broken file and the uh, uh, root canal walls, and I pulled the edge file and removed the instruments. But no, it doesn't necessarily work when you put the edge file inside the periodontal tissues. You have to analyze the CBCT and have to understand what kind of anatomical structures are near the tooth. Here you see where they broke the instrument in the middle portion and in an apical portion of the distal canal. We see the proximity of their uh, inferior alveolar nerve so we couldn't work beyond the apex what i did in this clinical case i decided to do a lot of irrigation i took a file of the small size i bend it to the degree to the angle uh, equal to the curvature of the root canal and i performed irrigation and with ultrasound i tried to touch this instrument and at a certain point i was lucky and file left the root canal and uh, actually this patient had peristasia uh, because of the obturation with his paste it was uh, the method of treatment with not complete extirpation of the pulp. When I managed to mechanically remove this space to wash out the root canal, so all these negative feelings uh, disappeared and patient has noticed that she feels much better after this attempt of treatment. The next group of clinical cases, when you see long broken files inside the root canal, do not be afraid to remove them. First of all, you have to understand that the instrument is broken in the area where it was blocked uh, mostly. When I see these pictures, I like it because I think it would hurt because the instrument got blocked in the area where it's broken. So in the orifice part, with the orifice file, I created the space near this broken file. Then with uh, a manual stainless steel file of small diameter, I managed to bypass and expanding the root canal. Uh, the root canal became more straightened so we don't have extreme expansion here i managed to remove the instrument also like in these clinical cases but 
I can also add the work with ultrasonic tip. I'll explain you why. I created this space and then with ultrasonic a tip made of titanium niobium alloy with a tip of the ultrasonic instrument, I touched the instrument trying to vibrate the instrument. So in certain moment, the broken file started to vibrate with the frequency of the ultrasonic file. So instrument started to cut the dentin around it. So there was a space I could manage to insert the manual hand and still uh, stainless steel instrument and remove the broken file. This is an old clinical case from my uh, practice. Also, I made the method of bypass, but I can tell you, frankly, I think that overexpanded the uh, coronal part. So I removed the instrument, it, it started to got straightening and I managed to remove it. But I think I could work much, much more precisely here, uh, much more gentle to the uh, coronal coronal part of the mesial canal. These patients also appear in our practice, this clinical case. So with two six, it's quite easy. Bypass, as I told before, with uh, orifice file, with then when uh, hand stainless steel file uh, or, or expansion and the uh, instrument left the canal, then we're working with the second molar, but you know that there are no difficulties with lentral, there is always space where you can insert the instrument. When you realize that you couldn't file uh, the uh, space where you can try to engage the instrument, so you're not having any progress, then you can use ultrasonic tips made of titanium niobium alloy with the tip of this instrument. You can touch the file, you can make the file vibrate during the vibration. Just you have to remember that the amount of the vibration more than 2000 vibrations per second. So the instrument starts to vibrate inside the canal and it starts to cut the denting. And then you can find this the space with the orifice file, as I do often, or with manual stainless steel file, you can try to bypass beyond this broken file. To, to six, we have two broken files in MB2. Uh, the same thing. So I made uh, the uh, effect of the ultrasound tip and I could my bypass with manual stainless steel file and then uh, extract the broken file. So see, uh, ultra ultrasound and vibration wave that transforms uh, goes to the broken file and broken file is, remo is removed. Uh, uh, lentally, by we do bypass, the instrument was stuck in the lumen and with the ultrasound I could remove the instrument. It's very interesting. When I've seen this x-ray, I think it's not hard for me. I, 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 I think I will do it easily. So I left about one hour in my schedule to remove several files. The tooth was treated twice. First, it was resorcinol formaldehyde method, red teeth from Russia. Then they tried it to uh, re retreat and they broke a lot of files in, in the second attempt. So I managed to do the bypass of the lentula that is in the mesial canal. If you look closely, you would see several fragments of the file in the distal canal, in the medial canal. So I thought everything would be very easy. So I did a bypass, so I'll remove the instrument. But after I bypassed the instrument, I decided to insert the rotary files uh, beyond the broken files. I'm doing it sometimes. And unfortunately, I broke per taper uh, next X2. And you see on the picture right now. So I required a lot of time to remove this broken file. The instrument was blocked between the dentin and the lentula. The bypass would be quite problematic, so I took uh, the tip ET25 and I started to touch, gently uh, touching the broken file, so it started to vibrate inside the canal. Please do not do additional uh, uh, steps. Do not try to cut the denting around the instruments. You have to, with precise instrument, with precise tip, touch the broken file, so the file itself would start to vibrate inside the canal. It would help you uh, then to bypass uh, its, uh, the file or wash it out with the help of irrigation. I'm against of preparing of the dentin with the ultrasound uh, in attempt to remove the broken file. And look how many files I managed to remove from this tooth. And I showed the obturation and it's very popular right now after removal of the instruments to show the obturation. I believe that I managed to uh, to learn to work uh, very precisely and gently. And you see on obturation x-ray we don't have over expansion. I removed six instruments, but I think that I didn't destroy 
the tooth and didn't worsen the prognosis of this tooth. This is not hard, but you have to use thin uh, tip uh, and long ET25L. What did I do? I touched several times the with this tip of this broken file. This is H file of big size. I think it's 45 according to the ISO. So the colleague wrote in the note with a patient that during the finishing cleaning of the root canal, this kind of complication happened. Yeah, maybe you could leave this instrument and leave it there, but the doctor decided that managed to have this complication to ask me to remove the file. So several uh, uh, touches of this ultrasound tip uh, managed to help me to remove this instrument from the apical portion of the palatal root. These files are not hard at all, so I uh, did the vibration of the file. You see the confluency uh, communication of the root canal, so I managed to bypass near, and then with the ultrasound I touched the instrument, and during the irrigation I just washed it out from the root canal system. You have to be very attentive analyzing x-rays. Sometimes I joke that thermophil method is very nice method to hide broken files, so when I started to work with this tooth, I didn't think that I would be forced to uh, remove the files. And I visualized in the microscope uh, the uh, broken rotary file. I think it was Protaper Universal, and I managed to remove it with the use of ultrasound, ultrasonic tips. I think I have enough experiences when I remove the broken files, I'm trying to analyze what was broken inside the canal by my previous colleagues. Right now, it was, I think it was Protaper Universal. One more thing, look, I tried to. Uh, uh, go according to the uh, route I told you, orifice part, orifice file, then you try to do bypass. Bypass is the most gentle and the most predictable method. It will help you to uh, get rid of a lot of complications, but if you failed in bypass and you can make the straight line access, you can visualize the instrument in the microscope without overexpansion of the canal, take the ultrasonic tip very uh, exact, precise, made of titanium, now be on file, touch the instrument several times in of the file, the file will start to vibrate, you'll have enough space to uh, go to uh, put the instrument near the canal, so I managed to remove the file of big, big diameter, was was blocked in the apical portion of the canal, so we are moving more apical and ma apical. Take notice, what about the files that are in the apical portion? you have to talk with the patient before and you have to inform him that there are certain risks and unfortunately if during the attempt of removal of the fail uh, there is there are risks of pushing the instrument inside the periodontal tissue in that case it's better not to try to remove the instrument because the, our main goal is do not harm even if you push the instrument into periodontal tissues maybe it will not influence the prognosis because the instrument will not cause the inflammation but i won't, wouldn't like to have instrument in my periodontal tissues and i wouldn't like that after my manipulations that instrument will migrate to the periodontal tissues during the consultation i discuss these risks with patients and if i understand that the instrument is uh, moving epically and it's ready to go to the periodontal tissues. Maybe I'll stop here and maybe I'll try to think about the uh, epical surgery. I was lucky in here. One more thing, according to the CBCT and the X-ray, we couldn't understand whether the instrument is stuck or struck in the constriction. Maybe it's partially in the periodontal tissues. We have to try to take ultrasound tip, touch file several times, and maybe you would be lucky, like in this clinical case, the broken file would just leave the root canal in several seconds. And I'm also showing you the obturation in this clinical case. And here I use Andichaksu file. What else could we do uh, of the breakage of the file when uh, long fragments of the files are in the root canal? We have uh, access from the orifice part and part of the instrument inside the periodontal tissues. My uh, opinion, if in this clinical case, if we try to you extract the file with bypass method, trying to pull it or to use ultra, ultra, ultrasonic tip. We have a, a, a lot of risks that this part that is blocked in the constriction, in this area the instrument could be broken and the part of the instrument would uh, be left in the periodontal tissue. The rest fragment I could remove. I don't want to take this risk and I came up with a method, I've seen it somewhere, I modified it, we use the method of using the glue. Sometimes I use it in my practice. For these cases, I remind you, when there is a long fragment of the instrument and uh, part of the instrument is beyond the apex in the periodontal tissue, and I can try to 
uh, hold uh, this file in a kernel part. I'll tell you. I'll show you the video. It's not on patient. So I'm trying to create the conditions to imitate this kind of situation. So in the coronal part near the orifice, you see the broken file. It's quite long, so it's part of it in the periodontal tissue. I'm not uh, expanding the uh, root canal. I'm not treat, uh, treating the root canal. I understand that I have to remove a little bit of dentin in the orifice part. Then I analyze the situation and I uh, look for the uh, tip from the uh, for example, syringe of with etching or from a, a flowable composite that I could place glue and I know in this tip that the instrument could be inserted. So I place the uh, drop of glue, then I uh, put the syringe plunger and uh, this, uh, the glue would glue together this uh, metallic tube of the uh, syringe tip and the instrument and with these gentle movements I can gently remove the instrument and from the periodontal tissues as well. So in these clinical cases it's preferable for me this kind of method of removal of the instruments. But it doesn't work with silver points. Here we have to do something else and it was a complicated clinical case. Uh, it was uh, quite complex because uh, uh, go, uh, to this zone the canal was uh, uh, obturated with zinc phosphate cement with uh, uh, silver point inside it. So I had to remove the zinc phosphate cement with the use of a microscope with the ultras uh, ultrasonic tip. And in some area maybe I touched the silver point and I got the complication that the silver point was broken. So I decided not to give up. So I made a bypass with a thin stainless steel file. Then I slightly pushed the instrument to the periodontal tissues. I started to rotate edge file. The silver point is quite soft. So we, the edge file started to uh, engage this instrument and then I managed to remove it. These clinical cases uh, uh, led me to some idea. I have to analyze the CT uh, scan. And sometimes we can see some kind of help. Sometimes some canals have uh, confluent apical third. So when I was removed these instruments from the middle part of the canal, I was touching uh, the file with ultrasonic tip and it was displacing epically. What I'm doing right now, I'm uh, treat, uh, do a shaping and cleaning of two root canals. I wash them with irrigation solution. I understand that these canals are communicating with each other. I take the syringe with saline solution, give it to my assistant, tell her to uh, uh, to push on a plunger, so uh, from one in one canal the saline solution is going and it is removed from another canal where this instrument I put inside the canal drawing sound tip and according to the stream of uh, fluid the file would be washed out from the canal. So this method helps me in the situations where there is a risk of pushing the instrument to the periodontal tissue. Uh, analyzing this clinical case, I warned patient Im immediately that peripical area is very wide and there is a big risk of pushing the instrument inside the periodontal tissues, but I will try to avoid that. In a PA uh, X-ray, I see that there is communicating canals. So I treated two root canals. When I try to touch the instrument with ultrasonic, the instrument or moved epically and then I gave to my assistant the syringe with saline solution and tell her to push on the plunger. So we had the uh, flow of the fluid with a thin ultrasonic tip. I went, went in, inserted it in the canal where there was a broken file, but kept on working and the system was pushing the plunger of the syringe and with uh, fluid flow, the instrument left the root canal. In this situation, it's just enough to you do the ultrasonic activation of the irrigation solution. I do uh, x uh, uh, Periodical X-ray instrument. The instrument is blocked in the apical part. When, but when I was touching with ultrasonic tip, I could understand whether the instrument is blocked in the apex or is slight mobility. If there is mobility, I wouldn't work with ultrasonic because I understand as soon as I will touch the instrument with ultrasonic aggressively, there is a risk that the instrument would be pushed to the periodontal tissue. What I would do? I will take the certain length. I will uh, put solution to the brim in this. A canal, I will activate the solution and maybe in some certain area, maybe with side movements touching this broken file, I believe I would be lucky and the instrument would swim out from the root canal system. And this is 
complicated. Uh, colleagues tried to uh, treat pulpitis and receive this kind of complication. They pushed the instrument, it's partially in the sinus, so I had to combine all my methods that I could, could use. What I did here in this situation, first of all, I tried to uh, precisely visualize and analyze the situation. I removed bu buckle cusps, so to have straight line access, so I can visualize in a microscope how the instrument is situa situated in the apical part of the palatal root, then uh, in the uh, canal there were remnants of the pulp, I removed all the remnants of the tissues, then I could visualize and understand how the instrument is situated in this apical portion, in, to which wall it's compressed, uh, which is angle of its position, then uh, with thin file I tried it to pull it, to displace it coronally towards myself, uh, use an ultrasonic tip, uh, using a thin stainless steel file, paper point sometimes could be of use, of, of course, irrigation in certain point. Uh, I was lucky, I was. You know, I tried even to use magnets, so the instrument um, displaced coronally and with the irrigation, I managed to put the push, the syringe with solid solution beyond the file and remove it. Here the instrument is in the periodontal tissues. To tell you the truth, when on the first appointment I've seen, the, uh, you worked with this, I was uh, disassembling this tooth, and I've not didn't know this instrument, and I told the patient that I wouldn't move this, uh, remove this file because it's not a reason of the infection in the root canal. So we can leave the instrument in the periodontal tissue. But when patient went with tubics with calcium hydroxide obturation, temporary obturation, I could visualize this instrument in the periodontal tissues, and I thought maybe there is a chance. Why not to try it? So I managed to pull the instrument using thin files, ultrasonic tips, uh, paper points irrigation with saline solution and in certain uh, point I managed to pull the instrument to the apical portion then I managed to go beyond with the syringe with saline solution and could wash it towards the uh, 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 tooth cavity and you can show me the results because I was very happy and the patient was very happy uh, of our results of course we made apexification with MTA because the apical portion as you can see is are extremely overexpanded. It was before me, so I didn't do overexpansion of the res or to remove the instruments. No, it was performed before me. So the apical portion was very wide, uh, more than 80 according to the ISO. So I couldn't use obturation with a normal technique. MTA helped me to get good result, and this is the dynamics uh, follow up in six months. This is complicated. You see the uh, instrument beyond the curvature. The only attempt is a bypass and believe that you will be lucky. So you won't be able to create straight line access visualization. It's impossible to see the instrument in the microscope. You have to believe that root canals are wide and you have a lucky day today. So these clinical cases are you know, debatable. Here I, I didn't manage to re uh, remove the instrument that is beyond the big curvature. Maybe, maybe I'm Lucky. Uh, one, one more thing. When patient uh, comes to you, you have to discuss uh, how many times before colleagues tried to do the attempts of remove the broken files. If a uh, patient says three, five times, five appointments, and doctors made appointments of one hour and more to uh, remove the instruments, you have to know before that this is. I think you will see perforation. So I informed the patient that there is big possibility of the perforation. So if I, I touch the instrument with ultrasonic tip, there is a chance that the instrument will try to migrate to the periodontal tissues. Then I have to stop not to make harm. That is what it happened here. Two, three perforations. As soon as I started to touch instrument with ultrasonic tip, instrument tried to displaced to periodontal tissue and I stopped and we managed to do, use another method. It's also the method of removal of the instrument, also as the method of extracting of the tooth with a file. So another clinical case, a uh, doctor uh, brought me a patient that she made treatment several years ago. We did uh, uh, cone bean CT and we see, uh, we managed to see apical lesions and on P uh, uh, X-ray, I thought it was a thermophil method, and there is a uh, fragment of the instrument in the apical part. I asked, asked colleague, but she said she didn't remember. It was a long time ago. Maybe the instrument was broken. She's not sure. So I uh, decided that we'll do apical surgery here initially because the root uh, length is quite big, 27 millimeters. I wouldn't be able with this kind of length to remove the broken file effectively. And additionally, this 
extrusion of the sealer to the periapical tissue uh, uh, tells me that the uh, obturator, uh, the carry of the uh, thermophiles, so they pushed uh, the uh, instrument and some of the material uh, beyond the apex. So for me, it was apical surgery. I uh, uh, removed the gutta until the instrument, and then we did the apical surgery. We uh, removed part of the root with this broken instrument. I have to tell you the truth. You see thermophile and uh, rotary file. It's not my obturation. We just did the surgery and the post and the restoration was performed by other doctor. So my colleague was doing that. And right now you see the follow-up after eight months after the performed treatment. You see uh, the healing. And in this clinical case, we managed to help the patient to remove the instruments and to uh, help yeah, to solve his problem with the teeth. I want to tell you that uh, the uh, re retreatment is a complex situation, but we have to be optimistic when we are facing with these complicated cases. First of all, my advice, please remember, nothing is so complicated as it looks in the beginning. I hope that during my lecture, I managed to show you a lot of cases when it's enough to use rotary file or manual stainless steel file and you can easily bypass the file fragment and remove it. And sometimes what we see on a periapical x-ray and we think it's complicated in normal life, it could be dealt easily with orifice uh, file and stainless steel instrument. The next thing, everything is more useful than it seems. I think you have to use that attempt of of remove the instrument, but try to do it with, with any uh, any price. And of, uh, infection could be before the instrument, so in the area where there is file is broken and beyond it, maybe there is no apical infection. So with your actions, you can clean the part of the canal before the canal. You can uh, do the temporary filling with calcium hydroxide, then obturation after the, of course, the location. Maybe everything is more useful than it seems. And the first take home message, I think that in the, a certain time, everything would be uh, as it has to be. So do the attempts of remove the files and may you succeed. Thank you for your uh, uh, attention. I think I was uh, helpful for you. Thank you very much.